Today, we're going to discuss the 14 best karambits in 2022. I'm Flash Review, welcome back to my channel. Nowadays, the karambit is a symbol of lethality and skill with a blade. These knives shaped a lot like a tiger claw or a hawk talon, are popular in the world of knife collecting and knife enthusiasts. In the below list of karambits we'll also cover everything you need to know about them from steel selection to EDC attributes. But before that, hit that subscribe button if you are new to the channel, and seeing me for the first time. Also, turn on that notification bell to keep up with my upcoming videos. With that said, let's jump straight into the video. Number 1. Fox Knives 599. This particular karambit exudes class and simplicity. They didn't try to get too fancy or too crazy with it, but it does look and feel ominous, as a karambit should. The handle is a very grippy and textured G10 and I like that although it provides a lot of grip, it doesn't feel sharp like these G10 handles sometimes do when they are heavily textured. The blade consisting of N690 Co. is a perfect selection of steel as it embodies a rough and tough blade capable of enduring heavy use but still feels elegant, light, and is rather easy to maintain. The Fox Knives 599 is an assisted but you can flip it out with ease and a little flick of the wrist. Deployability is obviously a concern when it comes to folding karambits but in this case, the flip of this knife is quick, consistent, and surprisingly very smooth. As far as sound goes, this knife has a unique tone when flipping it open that I cannot simply describe in words but it's very satisfying despite not being extremely loud or sounding mechanical by nature as many other knives do. Number 2. Fox Knives Oresht Frati SRL 478. Another outstanding karambit. The primary differences here are that this knife is a slight bit larger both in blade size and overall open length and although I actually prefer the compact size of the 599, I could see why there are many users of this particular model as well, as it still retains a lot of that same compact feel to it. The blade composition is the same as the 599 being that it's Bowler N690 Co., which is pretty hard to go wrong with since it's well balanced and very strong steel. The handle is where you'll notice the largest difference between the two, with the 599 being an extremely grippy G10 versus this knife, being a very nice brushed aluminum style handle. I would certainly say the 599 has more grip, although the aluminum feels nicer in the hand and honestly looks nicer in my personal opinion as well. Overall, the two are very similar and are within about $10 of each other, so if you've whittled down your choices between these two, you really can't go wrong with trusting your gut and going with what suits your personal preferences most. Number 3. Spyderco Karahawk Spyderco isn't exactly known for making karambits but they are well known for pushing the boundaries of what otherwise is a concrete design and I think the Karahawk fits right in well with their ethos. Of course, Spyderco elected to go with what seems to be their favorite steel, VG10, which means this would likely be one of the most corrosion resistance karambits on this list and on the market today, which is a huge plus if you'll be using this in a wet environment or perhaps carrying it with you to go fishing. The Karahawk isn't cheap and it's tough to really justify that whopping price tag but honestly, Spyderco has been pumping out some very nice knives on the premium spectrum and the Karahawk, although not the most amazing knife they've ever made overall, is certainly a step ahead of most of what you'll find in the market for karambits. It's tough to explain, but feeling this knife in your knife just exudes a sense of confidence and strength. The Karahawk is definitely the easiest non-assisted opening karambit on the market and is virtually effortless to flip open which I definitely find is A+. Honestly, if it wasn't so expensive, this would be our favorite choice, but I would say that unless you just really enjoy the Spyderco-esque flair they've brought to the Karambit, the marginal upgrades over some of the other Karambits on this list don't exactly justify the price tag. Number 4. Emerson Combat Karambit Emerson Knives is not a stranger to building knives that are incredibly lethal and built like tanks so it's no surprise they jumped into the market with a Karambit offering. They have two versions of their iteration of the Karambit and the only real difference is the size. I had my hands on the Combat version and have yet to physically handle the Super version myself, but I definitely prefer compact folding Karambits and had no issue with the 2.60 inch blade on the Combat variant, so I'd assume I would enjoy both but wouldn't necessarily ditch the Combat for the Super. 
154 cm blade steel with these thick and strong titanium liners is right on par with a steel choice you can expect to use and abuse and keep on trucking. So that was a very good strategy for Emerson. Overall, the knife feels ridiculously strong, as most Emerson knives do, and I would imagine that if reliability under duress is your most important factor, the Emerson Combat Karambit should be at the top of your list. Number 5. Cold Steel Tiger Claw Cold Steel makes some seriously tough products despite most of their lineup not being made in the US. As long as not being American-born isn't a problem, Cold Steel is almost always a solid choice no matter the category of knife, and a lot of people don't know, but the Cold Steel Triad Locking Mechanism is one of the strongest overall locks on the market and yes, the Tiger Claw has it. Alright, so I don't really like the full serrated blade, sue me, however, I can certainly see why people enjoy these, and I have to say, in terms of whipping it out and slashing down a piece of fishing line, the Tiger Claw really can't be beaten. Andrew Demko designed this knife alongside Cold Steel and its conceptual idea was to encompass the fighting and lethal heritage of the Karambit's history but also create a useful tool utilizing the latest and greatest technology. While I wouldn't necessarily say the powdered metallurgic stainless CTS XHP is the best steel you could ever get, it's certainly not far off. I really like this steel and would love to see it used more by other brands because overall, I've gotten excellent mileage out of it in terms of edge retention which is a huge plus because sharpening a fully serrated blade isn't exactly exciting or easy. It's not as tough overall as some of the other competitors on this list, like 154cm, but it will probably outlast 154cm in terms of wear resistance, so it kind of depends on whether or not you need something for heavy duress or something for the long haul. Overall, at something like a hundred bucks, the Cold Steel Tiger Claw feels priced right and although it wouldn't be my personal favorite karambit to use, I think it's a good value and if it suits your tastes, you really can't go wrong here. Number 6. CRKT Provoke This is makes a lot of very usable and utilitarian based knives but every so often they collab with someone that has an insane idea and they make it a reality. The Morphing Kinematic Provoke is an absolutely ridiculous karambit that's just flat out craziness, but it is really cool too and if you have 200 bucks and a sensation for something new, it's pretty unlikely you'll find anything else like it. Let's take a quick step back real quick. Yes, its design is pretty nutty, but actually, the operation of the knife itself feels very intuitive and natural, almost as if this is what folding karambits should have felt like from the get-go. Think about it, the kind of grip you want where you're utilizing the ring and everything requires a bit of finagling with a folding karambit, but on the Provoke, the design intentionally sets you in the right direction, allowing a firm and well-established karambit-like grip even before the blade is unfolded. Honestly, it's not just a crazy design, but fully functional and sensical, who would have thought? Okay, 200 bucks might make this one a hard sell, especially when considering the blade is D2 steel. Don't get me wrong, D2 isn't an inherently horrid steel, but at this price point you can get much higher quality steel and therefore it becomes a trade-off between steel composition and design slash aesthetics. To me, it's pretty cool to have as part of the collection, but to others, it may not be tactical enough to fully justify paying the price of the Provoke. Number 7. CRKT Du Hawk. A lot of karambits out there embody this idea of sleek and slender, being weapons of crisp lethality but not the CRKT Du Hawk, oh no. This thing is massively hefty and isn't afraid to be pronounced and blatant in its intentions. While this may be counterintuitive to the normal karambit behavior, it actually makes for an interesting tool. Sure, there's a little bit of a learning curve when you first get to using the Duhok, but the extra thickness and a rather flat spine actually lends itself to being a lot more useful around the campground or at work due to the easier avenue of applying pressure on the top of the blade. It's odd, sure, and no. The Karambit isn't the best EDC style if you have intentions for daily utility use, but the Duhok does make a creative gesture towards closing the gap between the lethality and utility use cases of the Karambit, making it just slightly more justifiable to carry around on a daily basis for the average user.